ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم فالذين امنوا به وازروه ونصروه واتبعوا النور الذي انزل معه اولئك هم المفلحون بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم هو الذي ارسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم الذين امكناهم في الارض اقاموا الصلاه واتوا الزكاه وامروا بالمعروف ونهوا عن المنكر ولله عاقبه الامور بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم شرع لكم من الدين ما وصى به نوح والذي اوحينا اليك وما وصينا به ابراهيم وموسى وعيسى ان اقيموا الدين ولا تتفرقوا فيه رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي ماي ريسبكتيڈ برادرز اند ماي سسترز وي ار ان ذا منت اوف ربيع الاول and i ask allah subhanahu wa taala that he gives me tawfeeq that i really can share with you my heart today about the message that we all have forgotten and that was the main purpose goal of the coming of every prophet including prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam see how throughout the history of humanity how we get off track that we don't even talk about what was the main purpose goal of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he was here as the last messenger of allah subhanahu wa taala i want to give you a little introduction first the best creation of this universe is human being the best creation ashraful makhlukat the best creation allah says in quran that i have created human being ahsan taqweem the best of the creation the creation for which allah subhanahu wa taala has asked all the angels including jibril alaihi salam to do sajda bow down the human being is the only creation allah made masjudul malaik the only creation about whom allah subhanahu wa taala in surah rahman says ar rahman allamal quran khalaqal insan allamahul bayan the only creation of allah subhanahu wa taala to whom allah subhanahu wa taala has created has given ilm and has given power of bayan to express himself or herself the only creation in this whole universe that allah has given this power he has ikhtiyar it's on his discretion wants to obey allah subhanahu wa taala or wants to disobey allah subhanahu wa taala other than human being every creation is bound to obey allah subhanahu wa taala allah has given some freedom to jinn jinn is also almost the same question is when allah is created this unique creation and has given this unique creation such a status that he has not given to any other creation then there got to be a purpose reason for that and that goal and purpose should be more than what all other creation of allah subhanahu wa taala is already doing Allah's tasbih hamd is done by every creation even the mountains and birds and trees every creation is doing 24/7 they have no other choice to praise Allah subhanahu wa taala and this whole situation is described by Allama Iqbal in the piece of poetry which I may have shared with you before یا وسعت افلاق میں تکبیر مسلسل 
یا خواب کے آغوش میں تسبیح ہو مناجات وہ مذہب مردان خدا گاہ خدا مست یہ مذہب ملا و جمادات و نباتات اللہ ہیز گیون دس پوئٹ سچ اے وزڈم دیٹ ہی ہیز گیون اے پکچر وائی اللہ ہیز کریٹ ہیومن بینگ دیر آر ٹو کیٹیگریز آف مسلم ون کیٹیگری ایز دے یا وسط افلاق میں تکبیر مسلسل ون کیٹیگری ایز دے ہیو انڈرسٹوڈ دا پرپز آف دیئر لائف اینڈ دے اسپینڈ ایوری سیکنڈ آف دیئر لائف ٹو اسٹیبلش دین آف اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ ٹو ریز دا ورڈ آف اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ ٹو میک شیور دے آر فوکسڈ آن دا پرپز اینڈ گول آف دیئر لائف to reach out to every soul every human being on this planet to communicate the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala their life is devoted to remove all the sufferings of the world human beings who are going through any suffering any pain any hardship any difficulty this is the job of a Muslim that he should be the representative of Islam to remove all the suffering humanity is facing at large this is one category of Muslim he is activist he is proactive he doesn't live his life for just for himself he is not self-centric rather he has a global vision for his life and Iqbal says there is another category of Muslims and this is the misunderstanding about the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Iqbal says ya khaak ke aghosh mein tasbih ho manajat there is other category of muslim they go in masjid go in seclusion confine themselves to their houses confine themselves to their own life and their family life they are just worried about their business about their life and forget about whatever happens in the world let people suffer let the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala suffer they don't care about it Iqbal says the first category of people are the one they have understood the purpose of life they have understood the maqsad of life they have understood the reason why Allah has created them wo mazhabe mardane khuda ga khuda mas the first category is they have understood their religion and they have given their life for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the second, second category ye mazhabe mullao jamadato nabatat Iqbal says then what is the difference between mountain plants and you just sitting by yourself and doing just tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you are not created for just for that mountain is plant is all other creations are but you as a masjudul malai you as a ashraful makhlukat you as created on ahsan taqween your job does not end at tasbih your job is to make sure that you reach out and knock on the hearts of every human being to communicate this message wallahi If you look around, all creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are in peace. Every creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in peace only because they are following the purpose of their creation. It is the only human being that we are suffering, going through pain, no matter what we get, no matter what status we achieve of our life, no matter how much wealth we collect, but still you see suffering among us the only reason is that we have failed to fulfill the purpose of our life my brothers and, and my sisters you know when we say kalma la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah this kalma is also is the tafsir of the quran and what iqbal has said in his poetry when you say kalma la ilaha illallah you are declaring there is no god but Allah you are declaring that I will get freedom from all false gods 
and false gods with time they change their faces they change their identity sometimes it was idols made by human being but then false gods become as iqbal says in taza khudaon mein bada sabse watan hai in taza khudaon mein bada sabse watan hai nationality iqbal say nationality i am palestinian i am pakistani wallahi before 1924 there was no such identity all muslims were one umma there was no pakistani or bangladeshi or egyptian or jordanian this was all divided to divide the muslims to lose their focus to lose their purpose i am more proud to be pakistani than a muslim because this identity is not the identity identity given by islam this is the identity given by the enemies of islam this is not my identity so what iqbal is saying that in taza khudaon mein bada sabse watan hai the biggest god the biggest false god of our time is nationalism and then you can go on this list money career and these all false gods when i say kalma la ilaha illallah i am promising allah subhanahu wa taala that i will get rid of all the false gods from my life you know when azan is called this is a repetition to let us know allah is akbar allahu akbar allahu akbar this is the phrase repeated so many times in azan when you come for iqama again repeat it allahu akbar allahu akbar and when you start your salah allahu akbar allahu akbar when you go for ruku when you go for sajda this repetition is to remind us allah is akbar allahu akbar that you should get rid of all the false gods and when we say muhammadur rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam we are declaring not that we are witnessing that he is the messenger of god but we are promising allah subhanahu wa taala through this kalma through this shahada that i will abide by the way of life brought by prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is not just a name of one personality my brothers and my sisters prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a name of way of life he has given us way of life it will be unjust if allah has sent us here as a best creation with purpose without letting us know the path what way we should follow who should we follow what is the way that we can achieve the success success of this life and the life hereafter that's why allah subhanahu wa taala sent prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and let me also highlight here one very important point it took more than 5000 years for humanity to reach to this level that allah subhanahu wa taala can say al yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al islam adina 5000 years after 5000 years humanity got to the maturity spiritual maturity their physical maturity that allah is saying that i have completed my nema and i have chosen islam for you as a deen and let me share with you one very beautiful point here every nabi before prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam came with the message it was nation oriented focused considering limitations shortcomings of that nation weaknesses of that nation prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam brought the message which was to the actual potential of humanity the full message not nation oriented message which has full potential up until the last human being will come on this planet what does that mean means this message will fulfill the needs of every age will fulfill the needs of every time until the last day of akhirah my brothers and my sisters 
so this message has bigger capacity allah has given this message to prophet sallallahu considering the full potential that allah has given to human being so this gold we have this jewel we have this blessing the nema of allah subhanahu wa taala we have that we are the best creation and allah has given us the best deen which is enough to fulfill the needs of humanity up until the day of judgment my brothers and my sisters wallahi for 1400 years before 1924 let me give you a little bit introduction of islam for more than 1300 years islam was the super power of the world london was living in dark ages there was no mention there was no mention of these cities when baghdad was the glory of the world was the glory of the world islamic civilization was the leading civilization of the world for 1300 years islam was the super power not on the basis of atom bomb not on the basis of hydrogen bomb not on making weapons of mass destruction rather the introduction of islam was islam was beneficial for every human being islam was beneficial for every human being regardless of their color regardless of their religion islam has presented the concept of welfare state for 1300 years islam has served humanity and let me give you one example in baghdad muslims developed one institution called baitul hikma and the budget of baitul hikma was more than the budget of cambridge and oxford today and the goal of that baitul hikma was to develop literature to develop theories to come up with solutions to solve the problems of the humanity to guide how to lead humanity how to decrease their pain and suffering and you will be surprised this is a institution in baghdad but 80% of their employees were non muslims islam presents you know a guldasta islam presents the collection of flowers of human being of all colors all religions for the benefit of humanity for the benefit of humanity my brothers and my sisters i pray to allah subhanahu wa taala that he gives us tawfiq that we can understand the true purpose of our life our purpose of life my brothers and my sisters is not only that i want to follow my religion myself but i want to make sure that everybody around me also get benefited from this religion and there are ways how we will do it when we say that i will do my tazkiya i will become better human being i will become better muslim then through my life i will show people you know this is what islam is this is what islam stands for that when people will come to visit my family people will witness this is what islam is there is another level of shahada that whenever we have our festivals we should invite non muslims we should invite people around us to see the festival when we do hajj they should know the why we do hajj they all know prophet ibrahim they all know his family so why not we share with them our festivals to see the life style of a muslim to see the life style of a muslim wallahi if we can show them the real life style what islam teaches us they are thirsty they are thirsty the only thing which can crunch their thirst is islam when it comes to witnessing islam there is a third level and this is actually i want to focus few more minutes that i have that is through social engagement you know as i said islam has come to remove the sufferings of the people islam has come to give us the concept of welfare state 
salvation not only of this dunya but the life hereafter Islam has come to teach us the ultimate goal of success ultimate concept of success success is not just the success of few days of this life success has a broader meaning and the broader meaning is that not only this dunya becomes janna for you but once you depart from this dunya that dunya is waiting for another janna for you the third level of witness is social engagement look at the life of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we are in rabiu lawal and sheikh last time he mentioned about one story when anybody can come in the masjid in nabwi and can hold the hand of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and take him to solve his problem if you remember the story of that yatim orphan when who whose money was with abu jahal and that orphan goes to abu jahal that give me my money and he refuses to give the money and mushrikeen of makkah they saw all this picture the yatim came crying the orphan came crying the crowd said to him why don't you go to this man they pointed towards prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and you in their mind mushrikeen had this that when prophet will go to abu jahal abu jahal will refuse him and he will curse him and he will do this and that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when this orphan came to him prophet holded his hand and went to abu jahal and abu jahal came out of the door and as soon as he sees prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam prophet says you better give the right of this orphan abu jahal goes inside brings the money and gives to that yatim now all these mushrikeen they went to abu jahal abu jahal you are such a strong man and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam came to you we were expecting that you are going to humiliate him you are going to refuse him look at what abu jahal said abu jahal said when muhammad came and he was standing in front of me i saw two harba I saw two big arrows that if I will not do what he is commanding me to do they will both penetrate in my chest Remember the story of another slave who comes in in the marketplace and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has bought in a shirt prophet had 10 dirham he bought one shirt for 4 dirham and this slave came and he sees Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam shirt and says ya rasulullah your shirt looks very good and prophet gave this shirt to him and as prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam going back to marketplace to buy another shirt he bought another shirt slave again crying in the marketplace prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says why are you crying now i gave you the shirt he says you know i came here to buy something and my master had given me two dirham and i lost to dirham and prophet gave him to dirham go to your master and without expecting any thank you from him prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam walks away but when he is walking away he heard that slave is still crying and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam turned back again went to him see this is this is murabbi this is leader This is the one who has pain of other people in their heart in his heart. He comes back he said now what I gave you through the ram go to your master he said no I am late and my master is a very strict master when I will go I will face the punishment from my master look at the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said let me go with you and prophet holds his hand and goes to the master back to get relief for this slave and the master he is seeing prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam coming and prophet knocks the door one time no answer second time no answer third time then he comes out and prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that why it took you so long to come out i knocked your door three times and remember the story that he said ya rasulullah when you were knocking and saying salam I was thinking let me have more salam from prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that's why I waited for the third 
And Prophet told him, this is your slave. Yes. Ya Rasulullah, this is my slave. This is the story. Master says, Ya Rasulullah, you came to my house. This slave is free. I gave him the freedom. Wallahi, this is what the social engagement is. We talk about the rights of the human beings. We, try, we talk about the rights of women. We talk about the rights of children. But whenever there is a violation, if there is no Muslim face, then this is nothing but just few empty words that we say. So we should be the representative of Islam that anywhere, everywhere, Muslims, non-Muslims, anybody going through pain and suffering, our responsibility of social engagement is that we should be there to stand with them. This is how we will let this message get out, my, bro my brothers and sisters. This is how we will create room in the hearts of the people. This is how we will propagate this deen. This deen will not propagate doing just program in masjid or confining ourselves to our self-centric life. Rather, we need to have a global thinking. We need to reach out to the brothers and sisters.